Hello, hello, my name is Jacqueline. I am a private jet flight attendant. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Recently I made a video titled, I wanna be a corporate flight attendant, but. And that video did do well, thank you guys for watching it, but I am still getting questions coming in, questions stating, I wanna be a flight attendant, but this is my hesitation. So I've decided to turn the, I wanna be a flight attendant, but into a series for you. Is it a series? Is it a playlist? I don't know, I'm creating an entire new playlist for you so you can find all of the I wanna be a flight attendant but questions in the same section. All right, in today's video, we are touching on one subject and one subject only. These will be shorter vlogs for you and it will be easier for you, the viewer, to find the information. So today the video is titled, I wanna be a corporate flight attendant but dot dot dot, build up suspense, I can't cook. And I'm here to tell you, that's perfectly okay. To be completely honest, you will have a slight disadvantage if you cannot cook as a corporate flight attendant, but it doesn't mean you're not gonna be able to find a job. There are ways to combat this issue, there are ways to have your resume stand out, and there are ways to help you succeed in this industry, even if you're not a chef. So the first tip I have for you, you can always order catering. Corporate flight attendants who are seasoned cooks do rely on catering because sometimes we just have quick pop-up trips and we don't have time to prep in our kitchens or we get a last minute dietary restriction from a passenger and we need to be able to fulfill that order. So you're definitely able to use catering companies. If you do have a budget on your trip and you find catering to be too expensive, go to a restaurant and pick up food that way. That's actually what I prefer to do. I hardly ever use airline catering companies. Um, they're extremely expensive. They're not always the best quality and I like using a restaurant because I like knowing that when I am sourcing food I have it in my possession there's not going to be a late delivery time I know that the food will be handled in a food safety manner and it just really gives me peace of mind to do my catering this way so if you do have a budget restricted trip just source your food from a local restaurant all right tip number two if you want to be a corporate flight attendant and you do not know how to cook a food portfolio is a must so every time you send your resume out, you also include your food portfolio with it. In the flight attendant interview, you are going to be asked, do you know how to cook? Or what is your level of comfort when it comes to preparing food on your own? This is where the food portfolio will come in handy. If you just say, I don't know how to cook, I'm not comfortable in the kitchen, the cooking aspect of being a corporate flight attendant is the worst part of the job to me, you're probably not going to get a call back. But if you submit a food portfolio with pictures of food that you have plated, you automatically have a better chance of getting a call back. If you're asked these questions in an interview, you can say, oh, I don't always prepare the meals myself. I source my food from my restaurant, but here's a picture of how I plate the food and present it to my clients on board the private jet. Obviously, you don't want there to be an ounce of doubt in the person who is interviewing you and showing off your skills in a food portfolio is a perfect way to put that person's mind at ease. It doesn't matter that you don't know how to cook because you know how to plate food. Now, tip three, if you don't know how to plate food, start studying how to plate food. This is almost as stressful as cooking for a group of people, but when you're at home and you're heating up your leftovers, rearrange them on the plate, make it look professional, make it look restaurant quality. Don't just heat your plastic container in the microwave and dump it out onto a plate. Start plating food for yourself or your family how you would plate for your clients on board a private jet. And if you don't know how to plate food, Google it. The food item that I have to plate that always gets me on the private jet is sushi. So I went to Google, I typed in how to plate sushi, and that's where I found my inspo. I took a screenshot of what I found on my phone and then I was able to copy that. Also, there is a great account on Instagram that I follow. It's called The Art of Plating. This is like high-tech plating, not generally what I do on board the private jet, but it is a great source of inspiration. It's a great resource for you to use. Again, they're called The Art of Plating. Study everything they do. Tip number four that I have for you is learn how to make one dish and learn how to make it really, really well. If you are a contract corporate flight attendant or you're applying for part 135 gigs and you're gonna have different passengers on board, learn how to make one thing and make it better than anyone else knows how to make it. So you are gonna wanna learn how to do a daytime dish, breakfast, and an evening dish, and you can do a smaller portion size for lunch and a larger portion size for dinner. 
So having at least one good meal for breakfast or slash lunch and dinner will put you at ease when it comes to answering the question, what is your comfort level with cooking? Just get into your kitchen and start practicing. Invite friends over, invite family over, make it a party, make it a celebration, make it an excuse to get in the kitchen and become comfortable with cooking. All right, and then the last tip I have for you, tip number five. Tip number five is fresh garnish will always be your best friend. So fresh herbs, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. If you're sourcing your meals from a restaurant, you can put fresh herbs on there and just bring the whole dish back to life, even if it's been sitting in your hotel refrigerator overnight on your layover. Adding a fresh element to your dish truly elevates that dish. So in your flight attendant bag, always make sure to carry fresh garnishes with you. It'll definitely save the dish. It will add color and texture or even height. And those are important fundamentals when it comes to plating a dish. Quick little video for you guys. I always say that and then I feel like I ended up talking a lot, but I just wrote down the top five tips that I would give to someone who asks me what their chances are of becoming a corporate flight attendant, even if they don't know how to cook. I don't think any obstacle should stop you from going for your dream job. The saying, fake it until you make it, it's so true, especially in the airline industry. So take these five tips, run with them, and don't worry if you're not the best chef in town. You can always replate restaurant food. I hope you all enjoyed this video today. Please do leave me a thumbs up for it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future flight attendant videos. I do have another I wanna be a flight attendant butt video coming up for you. I'll probably put it out in two weeks. This way I can keep things on my channel fresh. If you guys are looking for me on social media, my Instagram is at Jacqueline Travels, spelled the same way it is here on YouTube. And my Twitter is at Jack Travels, that is J-A-C Travels. Thanks again for watching. Be safe out there. Bye.